Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is a disorder due to an accessory electrical conduction pathway connecting the atria and ventricles. Normally, an electrical impulse starts at the sinoatrial node in the right atrium. It then propagates out through both atria, and atria contraction occurs. On EKG, atrial contraction can be seen as P wave. At the atrioventricular node, electrical impulses are slowed down for a very short period, which corresponds PR interval. Then the electrical impulse travels down the conduction pathway via the bundle of his and to the Purkinje fibers of the left and right ventricles, causing ventricular contraction, which can be seen as QRS complex on EKG. The AV node is the only place where the signal can get through to the ventricles from the atria. In Wolf-Parkinson-White pattern, electrical impulses can additionally travel from the atria to the ventricles through an abnormal cardiac tissue that can conduct electrical signals, called bundle of Kent. As the signal moves through this accessory pathway, there is no delay, and the ventricles start to contract a little bit early, which is called pre-excitation. In sinus rhythm, the atrial impulse will reach the ventricles via both AV node and accessory pathway. Although the signal through the accessory pathway can cause pre-excitation, the normal signal passing the AV node eventually makes its way, and the two signals eventually combine to contract the ventricles. On EKG, people with Wolf-Parkinson-White pattern have a short PR interval less than 120 milliseconds, a delta wave, which is typically seen as a slurred upstroke in QRS complex, with a wide QRS complex, more than 120 milliseconds, because of pre-excitation of ventricles through accessory conduction pathway. If the accessory pathway is on the left side of the heart, it is called type A pre-excitation. In type A pattern, Delta waves are upright in all of the precordial leads with dominant R wave in lead V1. If the bundle is on the right side, it is called type B pre-excitation. In type B pattern, delta waves are predominantly negative in leads V1 to V3, and predominantly positive in leads V4 to V6. ST segment and T wave will often be directed opposite the QRS complex. It can be mistaken for left bundle branch block or left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. There are two main forms of tachyarrhythmias that occur in patients with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, atrioventricular reentry tachycardia, AVRT, and atrial fibrillation. In AVRT with orthodromic conduction, normal antegrade conduction travels down the AV conducting system then the signal might travel from the ventricles to the atria through the accessory pathway, because the majority of bundles of Kent are bidirectional. This creates a re-entry circuit, resulting in a narrow complex tachycardia. On EKG, orthodromic AVRT may not show a delta wave, if there is no pre-excitation through the accessory pathway. Orthodromic AVRT is practically indistinguishable from the more common AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, AVNRT. Nevertheless, the treatments are exactly the same. Hemodynamically stable patients receive vagal maneuvers and adenosine, and unstable patients receive synchronized electrical cardioversion to terminate arrhythmia. Less commonly, the signal can travel from the atria to the ventricles through the accessory pathway, then retrograde conduction proceeds up the AV node, and creating re-entry circuit. This results in a regular wide complex tachycardia, which is called AVRT with antidromic conduction. Antidromic AVRT can be initiated by several mechanisms, such as premature contractions in the atria or ventricles. Without electrophysiologic study, antidromic AVRT will be difficult to diagnose definitively. In atrial tachyarrhythmia, atrial rates can be faster than 200 to 300 per minute. 
When those impulses are allowed to be transmitted to the ventricles very rapidly across an accessory pathway, the result can be rapid ventricular rates, which may degenerate to ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. The administration of AV nodal blocking drugs preferences conduction via the accessory pathway and may precipitate ventricular arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. EKG features of atrial fibrillation in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome are heart rate more than 200 beats per minute with irregular rhythm, with extremely high rates in some places, up to 300 beats per minute, which is too rapid to be conducted via the AV node. Wide QRS complexes due to abnormal ventricular depolarization via accessory pathway and subtle beat-to-beat -beat variation in QRS morphology, unlike polymorphic VT. Atrial flutter results in the same features as AF, except the rhythm is regular and may be mistaken for ventricular tachycardia. If there remains any doubt about the diagnosis of a wide complex tachycardia, it is recommended that it be managed as suspected ventricular tachycardia. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching this video. Stay safe and healthy.